My name is Danielle Cooper. I am a young survivor of breast cancer. I was diagnosed at 28 years old. I had a one and a half year old son and a husband and a full time job. Um, this picture was actually taken uh, right after I found out that I was diagnosed. My good friend Lauren took it for me um, to help kind of keep a record of what life looked like pre-cancer. Um, so a little happy family with long hair, but behind those smiles, there's lots of worry. Um, Pink Sisters has given me that sisterhood and camaraderie that I really needed, um, given me connections to other survivors in the area and provided me with the chance to relax and um, unwind on a beautiful houseboat in the Columbia River in the state that I love. Um, a lot of really great things for me emotionally and mentally and for that I am extremely thankful for Pink Sisters and everything that they've done for me. My name is Cam Ramsdale and I was diagnosed in 2012 at 38 um, years old. Uh, so I've been going through almost six years of treatment. I was diagnosed stage four which means that there is no cure. I will be in some sort of treatment for the rest of my life um, or until there's a cure. I have been on two retreats with Pink Sisters and um, the last one that I was on was specifically for stage four um, breast cancer patients. Um, we don't really identify with the word survivors because at this point we haven't really survived anything. We're still kind of fighting or thriving or whatever word you want to put on us every day. Um, and so that was the nice thing to come to a retreat that was just with stage four people um, because each of us understood what the other was going through. Um, and so to have the opportunity to go on a retreat um, and have this beautiful setting Treat house on the Columbia River was truly, really a blessing. And I do not thank Pink Sisters enough. Welcome to TV Toastmasters. I am the host, Deb Hart from Pink Sisters, and I have a special guest to share with you. Her name is Danielle Cooper, and Danielle is a very young breast cancer survivor. Welcome, Thank Danielle. You. Thank you so much, Deb. Thank you for having me on here. You're so welcome. Tell me who Danielle Cooper is. Well, I am a wife to a wonderful man. Um, I am a mother to a wonderful three-year-old boy. Whoa. Yes. That's busy. <laughs> He's busy all the time. <laughs> um, I'm also a full-time project manager at Daimler Tracks and a breast cancer survivor. So I was diagnosed at 27, so wow. very young. 
Can you share with us a little bit about your journey at 27 years old? So I was officially diagnosed with breast cancer on May 17th of 2016. So we're coming up on two years of survivorship. Um, I had felt the lump in the shower, I would say probably four months before I even had it looked at because breast cancer doesn't run in my family and mm -hmm. young people don't get breast cancer. It's not something that you have to think about. Um, I had my port placed um, in my chest on June 2nd, June 2nd, uh, 2016, and then I started my first chemo on June 9th, 2016. I did eight rounds of chemotherapy oh um, with the wonderful Compass Oncology West. The staff there is amazing. That's um, good to hear. That's yes, good to know. They are amazing. The nurses there are angels. Um, and then I had my, I finished chemo on September 15th, which was also my younger sister's birthday. Special. Very special. And I had my bilateral mastectomy on October 17th, 2016, and started radiation that December. And I went Monday through Friday for five and a half weeks. Um, for how many minutes of radiation? It's 12 not minutes. 12 minutes. Wow. <laughs> it actually spent more time in the waiting room putting together puzzles than the actual treatment itself. So it was actually a really big inconvenience, but an inconvenience that is proven to s extend my life. So I did it, and I did it with a smile. Um, and then in December of 2017, so just this, December. just this past December, I had a deep flap reconstruction, which is not an easy surgery. They take the abdominal tissue, your abdominal fat, and they recreate breasts from it. So I have a scar from hip bone to hip bone, as well as on both my breasts. Um, wow. I was pretty much down for the count for about six weeks. Um, it was a very hard surgery. And I have a cleanup surgery and my hysterectomy on April 30th, so I'm not done. Wow. Um, I'm also taking a brand new oral <clears throat> chemotherapy called Neratinib. Um, it's for HER2 positive breast cancer survivors who have already gone through Herceptin and Pergetta. It was just cleared by the FDA this past June. Well, congratulations. That's Thank pretty you. exciting that yes. you get that study drug. Yes, it is proven to help um, increase life expectancy by about 4% in, with people with my particular cancer. So anything I can do to get to 100%, right? There you go. <laughs> I'm with you 100% myself with yes. that. <clears throat> so Danielle, can you share with our viewers uh, how you met me? I met you at one of your retreats at your floating home on the Columbia River. Last, free retreat. Yes, free <clears throat> retreat last summer, last July. It was amazing. Um, and we just kind of hit it off. And when you asked me to join your board, I said, of course, I would love to be a part of Pink Sisters and everything that you do. Well, thank you for everything that you do do for Pink <laughs> Sisters. Thank you. <clears throat> well, the next part of this is, what next for Danielle Cooper? Well, I plan... How are you going to make your mark? <laughs> Everybody does. They write a book or they, you know, are an inspirational speaker. What are you going to do? Well, I am hoping to really maintain some advocacy within the breast cancer world, especially for young breast cancer survivors. And really, I would like to help other mothers who are going through this. It was not easy. It was really hard. And a lot of times, I just pushed myself. Yeah. So that, you know, we need more groups. We need more advocacy. We need to really change the landscape on how we treat young survivors and how we treat young women on learning what causes breast cancer and how to detect it yourself. Yeah. Well, you had great support because I've met some of your family members and you have rocks as support. <laughs> I do. You really do. Not everyone has that. No. 
but you've been very, very fortunate yes. to have that and blessed. Very yeah. blessed. My yes. grandparents, my husband, my mother, my father, my Your sister. Your employer? My employer, Daimler, has been amazing. I mean, through chemo, I didn't have to take a single vacation day. Mm -hmm. My medical benefits are amazing. So mm -hmm. I've been truly blessed. You have. You have. Wow. Well, <clears throat> I just am so blessed to have you a part of the Pink Sisters. And what are your plans for Pink Sisters this summer? We have a lot of retreats coming up. <clears throat> what are you going to do to help us out? So I am going to continue to maintain our website and bring uh, new blog content and educational features, as well as do more advocacy through Pink Sisters. And I am doing a family, young survivors family retreat. We're gonna do go glamping. So I'm super <clears throat> excited for that. Me too. And just help you out however I can, you know. I wanna do makeovers, help you cook, uh, just be a support person And for speaking you. of cooking, you're not <laughs> only at Damler, but you're also a pastry chef. A so. pastry chef, yes. yeah. So that's pretty exciting. Yes. And she takes her cakes to the fair. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I won second place the last two years. It was really special um, right after I'd finished chemo, and I won second place at the Gary Frank Chocolate Cake Contest at the State Fair. And then last year, I placed second again. So I'm gunning for that first place. Well, you live in fair country because you live in Canby. I do, right <laughs> behind the uh, fair complex in Canby, actually. Wow. Yes. Wow. How many years have you lived there? We just moved there last year, last June, um, and we love it. It's amazing yeah, out there. It is a great community. I've been out there to visit with you a few times. Yes. It is. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I just also want to ask, you know, what about this next piece that you're about to go through uh, as a breast cancer survivor? Can you share with us just a little bit? Some people might say, wow, it's been almost two years. Why? Why is it? lasting so long, this this journey that you've been on. So can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, it's kind of a common myth that when you get cancer, and particularly breast cancer, whether it be triple negative or triple positive like I have, um, that it's over after chemo. It's not over after chemo. Chemo is just the start. And actually that's kind of the marathon -y part of the, treatment, you know, it takes forever. You go every two weeks or every three weeks. And I was unfortunate that my biopsy came back HER2 negative, and it wasn't until after my mastectomy that we found out I was actually HER2 positive. So I had to actually go back and start another year worth of treatments um, for that particular cancer. So it lasted even longer than it should have. <laughs> it's just been going on and on yes. and on. And every month I receive my um, oral chemo in a nice yellow toxic bag, which my husband always kind of looks at weird. <laughs> and I will take that every single day. I take six pills every day for 365 days. So I will be done next February. And by next February, I swear, that's the end. <laughs> and don't you hear from friends and family that say to you, you look amazing, you look beautiful, you have good color in your skin, you look like a specimen of health. Mm -hmm. And you, one thing about you, you always take such good care of yourself. Well, and you really have to. I mean, mm -hmm. I never wanted to look sick. Yeah. Um, I never liked the way that looked, so yeah. I was very blessed that I have an amazing team. I have a wonderful naturopath, and then my acupuncturist, um, Casey Borba, at Portland Family <coughs> Health is amazing. She has kept me alive. I mean, wow. she's kept my body so healthy, and that's been amazing. Um, and maybe we could even have her on the show at some point. That would point. be fantastic. Yeah, she is a she's great person. She's worked with person. a lot of breast cancer survivors. Yes. Well, Danielle, it's been so great to have you on the show, and I thank you so much for coming. Thank you and, so much. Yeah. So, Danielle, where can we find out more information about you? Well, you can find more information on the pinksisters.org website, 
or on my blog, coopswholekitandcaboodle.com. That is such a cute name. <laughs> you won't forget that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for coming. Thank you so much for having me. And that concludes our TV Toastmasters. Deb Hart, I'm your host, and I welcome you at another segment. By the way, I'm from Gresham Toastmasters, and if you're looking for a club, check out Gresham Toastmasters. Hi, I'm Deb Hart. I'd just like to share with you how appreciative I am of being able to be a TV Toastmaster host. I get to share stories within the community, have people come on the show and educate the viewers, and talk about a subject that I'm very familiar with, and that's health. I encourage you to come aboard and be a part of our TV Toastmasters Host Club. It's fun. You'll have a good time. My name is Charles Shermery. I'm on to TV Toastmasters as an associate producer. I've been involved with the Portland Salem Beaverton, Oregon City locations for TV Toastmasters. TV Toastmasters has enhanced my ability to speak in front of a room. Not only that, but has also enhanced my ability to speak in front of a TV audience. Hello, my name is Beth Genley, and I am this year Vice President for Education for Toastmasters for Speaking Professionals, which is a club that I love. Through that club, I became acquainted with TV Toastmasters. I got interviewed here a few times and began to learn how to speak to a camera and how different that is from speaking to a group, how to connect with an audience that I can't see, and how to stay focused on a camera that is not talking back to me or smiling. After I did that a few times, I was invited to become an associate producer here, and now I'm bringing people from my club and other interesting people to TV Toastmasters each month and finding out wonderful stories and fantastic individuals who are contributing a great deal to our community. It's been a great ride. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the next year will bring as TV Toastmasters continues to be the voice for District 7. Hi there, my name is John Rodkey. I'm the Program Quality Director for District 7 Toastmasters. In my role as a district officer, I get the opportunity to help support over 3,000 Toastmasters and helping them become better communicators and leaders within their communities. With that awesome opportunity, I also get a new one today to be with TV Toastmasters as they are helping televise the voice of District 7. Ken Coombs here speaking about TV Toastmasters. As an area director, I see more value in that venue than perhaps some of you do, so I want to share that. Providing a televised voice for District 7, its clubs, and their members not only gives people a chance to come here and get a project ticked off that says, speak on television, it gives contestants in an area contest or a division or a district contest at least 
a chance to come and practice and see what they look like. It gives people a chance to share an important message with the district, whatever that might be. So consider your next speech perhaps being on television. Not your 15 minutes of fame, but your chance to reach a broader audience. Hello, my name is Christopher Taylor and I'm with TV Toastmasters. My home group is Feedbackers out of Beaverton, Oregon. When I first joined Toastmasters, I didn't know what to expect. I was nervous, I was scared to speak in front of public, and I needed some help. Joining Toastmasters did a lot of things for me. First of all, it gave me the confidence to get a job. Second of all, I quickly climbed the ranks in my job. I got a speaking role with my company. And it didn't take long before I was giving executive briefings. I began managing the Berkshire Hathaway account, which is a Fortune 2 company, and I now give executive briefings to the C-level executives for the Berkshire Hathaway family. And I could not have done that without Toastmasters. Thank you. I joined Toastmasters to improve my speaking, listening, communication, and leadership skills. Toastmasters gave me incredible confidence. 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 Great listening skills. Poise. Great leadership skills. Leadership skills. The ability to speak in public. Strength. A captive audience. Quality feedback from the more experienced Toastmasters. Toastmasters really helped me improve my listening skills. Sales skills opportunities to go to different groups and widen my whole horizon. Toastmasters has given me a better, a more focused me, and I'm a much better listener. Toastmasters is fulfilling. It's a great place to fail your way to success. Wonderful way to meet people. Networking. Strength. It's addictive. It's a club of self-improvement. It's an experience, it's a ride that you won't forget and you'll enjoy it every step of the way. Toastmasters helped me land a kick butt job. I sang at one of my table topic speeches and people liked it and applauded. it. My business is doing great and I'm very, very grateful to Toastmasters. It's been a great experience for me. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters, for giving me so much confidence. Thank you, Toastmasters, for everything. As part of TV Toastmasters, I am f helping to fulfill a mission to be the voice of various clubs around District 7 and Toastmasters International. My home club is New Horizons Toastmasters, but I'm also part of this club because I believe in the mission. I believe that Toastmasters has a real true opportunity for many people to help improve their lives, to improve their personal lives, to improve their interpersonal skills. I truly am grateful to be able to participate to help New Horizons and other Toastmasters find their voice through TV Toastmasters that is broadcast through the greater Portland area and Salem area. I look forward to more opportunities to be the voice and to be the conduit of the voice of many other clubs and many other members of Toastmasters as I continue my participation in TV Toastmasters. Hi, I'm Eric Bergman. As a member of TV Toastmasters, I get to learn all about video production, running a TV show. Plus, I get to be on camera interviewing really fascinating Toastmasters who share their stories about their hobbies, their activities, and how they benefit our community. I also get to bring in members of my home Toastmasters club. We toasted in Lake Oswego. They get to tell their stories and build their communication skills. We're bringing a voice for District 7 Toastmasters here in Oregon and Southwest Washington to a TV audience. And TV Toastmasters is a great way to learn how to spread your message and share your stories with a wider audience. I'm Deb Hart, and I'm from the Gresham Toastmasters Club. And I'd just like to share with you how I became a host for TV Toastmasters. It's by going to my club and Gresham and being evaluated 
and sharing my story. I've learned so much in the past 12 years. You won't even believe how much I've learned. I encourage you to find a club and join in and be a Toastmaster. My name is Charles Shamry. I'm going to TV Toastmasters as an associate producer. I've been involved with the Portland, Salem, Beaverton, Oregon City locations for TV Toastmasters. TV Toastmasters has enhanced my ability to speak in front of a room. Not only that, but has also enhanced my ability to speak in front of a TV audience. I joined Toastmasters to improve my speaking, listening, communication, and leadership skills. Toastmasters gave me incredible confidence. 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 Great listening skills. Poise. Great leadership skills. Leadership skills. The ability to speak in public. Strength. A captive audience. Quality feedback from the more experienced Toastmasters. Toastmasters really helped me improve my listening skills. Sales skills opportunities to go to different groups and widen my whole horizon. Toastmasters has given me a better, a more focused me, and I'm a much better listener. Toastmasters is fulfilling. It's a great place to fail your way to success. Wonderful way to meet people. Networking. Strength. It's addictive. It's a club of self-improvement. It's an experience. It's a ride that you won't forget, and you'll enjoy it every step of the way.